And as in the drug context, the paradigm is shifting, and Washington and many governments around the globe are moving to a model that prioritizes a different sort of prevention uh, uh, and intervention ahead of possible law enforcement uh, investigations and arrests. The heart of this effort, based on existing social science research, begins from the assumption that individuals headed toward radicalization and violent extremism generally exhibit behavior that foreshadows their inclination. Whether it's self-isolation, uh, an interest in violence, uh, or violent games, strongly held grievances, that list, as developed by social science, goes on uh, from there and remains uh, an area uh, of further investigation. And while it is important also to remember that exhibition of these particular uh, characteristics does not automatically mean uh, that the individual is directed, uh, is, is directing him or herself toward violent acts. Uh, I still believe that the point uh, remains valid uh, and leads to the second core assumption uh, uh, in terms of moving forward in this effort. And that assumption is that this behavior is observable by other people, by family members, by peers, by authority uh, figures like religious leaders or medical, especially mental health professionals. If you look at the history of the Boston Marathon case, in each of those areas there was someone who saw one or the other of those two brothers exhibiting those kinds of characteristic behaviors. But none of them were reported. So from that starting point, how does society mobilize those kinds of, of observers to connect with institutions that can intervene and redirect and prevent. And this leads to the core element, of the central element of our national strategy here in the United States. Prevention of, uh, excuse me, pre-violence observation, identification, uh, and intervention are most likely to occur on the community level. And that is where society needs to focus the heart of its efforts.